Hello everybody and welcome back to Nick and Sergio's Fun Watch List. I'm not saying my name this week. I'm not doing it. How are you? And what is your name? Hi Nick, I'm Sergio. <laughs> you did them both. What a <laughs> twist. I love it. Uh, we're really trying out new things. Because this is the Solo Las Mas recap and we are on episode 6. What did you think of this episode, the semifinals? Oh my god. I was on my toes the entire time. <laughs> you were. You were standing. I was standing. Yeah. I was literally standing watching this. I you was... look like Abigail, the, the ballerina <laughs> vampire. It was incredible. I think it was a twist after a twist after a twist. Twists Every and turns. Twists and turns. And this is the ladder. This is, this is the final game of the snakes and ladders. <laughs> yes, they they're climbing that final ladder all the way up to the finals, which they're recording live in a couple weeks, right? At yes. the Pepsi Center. It's going to be live in 2 weeks, so that means that we will not be here next week. But yeah, we're going to take a week off, I guess. Yes, we will. Um, but we will miss you dearly. What a great episode. What a great episode. And we were complaining about like wow, there's too many rules. Yes. I think in this episode it was good how many rules there were. Yes. <laughs> Cuz we knew what they all were. Yes. We finally <laughs> learned every everything about the game do you think that the judges made up everything at the very end just to like be like how many points should we give for stars so we can send the people we want to the finale i think it's basically impossible to prove that that didn't happen so yeah i do believe that at the same time i guess there's some merit to it because when you're in the top on a regular season of la mastraga you do get six stars right so that's what the gold star was but that always seemed like a really random number to me so maybe they just love the number six you're right it is the same the devil's number Six, six, six. Think about it. Monsters. <laughs> we start this episode with our usual congregation around the scoreboard. Everyone's putting their stars up on the board. Soro is excited because she finally got her gold she star. She got a gold star. Exciting. We love Soro. And Madison puts up her pink star and her gold star because she got both. She got the Mario Party star last episode. She literally got <laughs> the Mario Party. <laughs> she got a random star and then a pink star. Now, I want to draw everyone's attention to this, and I'm sure that I'm not the first person to say this. I'm not even sure this is the first time I've said this this season, but I would like to direct your attention to the following screenshot. What the fuck color are all these fucking stars? (laughs) There's a green one, there's a blue one, there's a purple one, there's a yellow one, and they're all made out of tiki I was literally thinking the same thing when I saw the board. I was like, I don't understand the colors. (laughs) It's wild. It's because they're prismatic. It doesn't look the same from all the angles. Yes. um, I issues guess, with camera. Yeah, production it's note production for next issues. year. Yeah, but it's it's not a real complaint. It they look pretty. I like different colors. Maybe there should just be a bunch of different color stars, <laughs> and they can be worth like five, four, three, two points. Whatever they feel like that day. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Sifra puts her black star on Shocking. the board. Yeah, she got a black star last episode. <laughs> and Velveteen is kind of having a lot of fun with like this surprise twist that the underdog of the season gave one of the biggest competitors a black star by yes. winning in the lip sync last week. Yeah. It, and it was kind of a fun surprise. It was a fun surprise. <laughs> I feel like this episode was not as messy as last episode. Last episode was just so messy. There was too many things happening. I still want to talk about it, but we won't. (laughs) No, we have to move on. We need to press forward. We have a cohesive, easy to follow episode of La Mastraga. This was a very easy episode. We were very easy to digest, easy to understand. I feel like I said there were a lot of twists, but I don't think there were any many twists as opposed to other episodes. So no, no, they were they were simple twists and they were exciting twists and they were quickly resolved. And I think quickly resolved. Yeah, I think that's what made it exciting. Avias comes in in a kind wow. of... Wow, she looks amazing. We were saying like Lee Bowery. Lee Bowery, yeah. look inspired. The club kid. Very club kid. And she announces that there's there's no Chiquireto this week. We're just going straight to the runway. Straight and it's to the runway. a very vague category. We're not doing a season six episode. I guess they hated all of they those hit, challenges. There, there were no runway girls in season six. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of doing a challenge from season six, they're doing... La muy maxima, and that's just the the very most. The very most. Yeah. Um, Simple. Just show your best drag, basically. It's your best drag, but as Avias says, it's also an opportunity to do, like, a redemption look. It's an opportunity to make a statement about your drag in general. It's a way to push your brand forward a little bit. I, I think it's kind of a fun challenge. I wasn't really sure what it was going into it. Um, I think this was just, like, drag excellence. Like, you know, this is, like, the drag race, the extravaganza extravaganza eleganza yeah just very vaguely beautiful is the (laughs) assignment or who is she who is she kiana saya 
Can we see? But you know, they have their own week. Who is she? They do have that. I appreciate an opportunity for them to kind of just do whatever they want. And we should just kind of go straight to the runway, in my opinion. Yes. They did a workroom thing. Everybody was, cried. We everybody cried. cried. Uh, we I actually it. cried a little. I was a little sad during it, but I don't think it needs to be recapped. I think this was just an opportunity for them to all get their final storylines, like, said out loud one time before the finale. I even noticed, like, none of them had any makeup on, so... I feel they like all know that we're all going to be crying. Production was like, come in an hour early, do all your crying first, and then we'll do the makeup after so you don't mess it up. we yes. got to have you look good on I the I think runway. definitely that was one of the instructions. Um, Marisol Gonzalez, our uh, amazing host from season six, comes to the stage. She looks really cute in this pink Barbie fantasy with the the sheerness and the interesting cutouts and the panty. Did you like this look? Yeah, it was cute having her back. She, I love the sheer and you could see under. It was very, it was sexy. very sexy. I liked it. Yeah. Yes. I loved it. And it, I kind of missed her, even though she's the most recent judge we've seen. I know. I feel bad because in our um, little quiz earlier in the season, we didn't even figure out her name by the end of the quiz. And I felt bad because she was a, she was a good host. I, I still I don't know her. her name. Sophia? Marisol Gonzalez. Marisol Gonzalez. Um, don't you forget it. I won't. Not after tonight. She goes over to Lola Cortez, who's wearing a very avant-garde like headpiece. Which she then gets rid of. She immediately removes it. She's like, I can't see anything in this. And I need to look at the runway so that I can say mean things about Velveteen. Um, (laughs) And instead of having one of our exciting makeup boys from earlier in the season, we love them both. But we have Mother returning. It's Lay's Hall. Special guest. Yeah. Extra. She looks amazing. She's in a uh, larger than life gown. I love that this train is just draping down off the stage. Mm -hmm. And she's back to give her little trucos. Were you happy to see Letal? I honestly was actually very happy to see her back. She is a good judge, in my opinion. Yeah. And no offense to those makeup boys. They were great. But I don't think it would feel like a complete season of La Mastraga if we didn't get at least one appearance from Letal. Mm Mm-hmm. And then we go into our runway challenge, and I love Marisol. I loved her last season. She always does, like, a little bit extra as she's... She does a lot of hand moves. She looks a little bit like she's doing, like, Doctor Strange or, like, a very complicated yoga routine. First to the stage, we have Georgiana. And I'm just gonna say it. One of my favorites of the night. One of my favorites of the night, too. She just looks so cute. Mm-hmm. This the is proportions, very the her. scale, the pattern, the little flowers, the color palette. Oh, I like how she made it fashion and she made it editorial, but it yes. still feels like Georgiana. It's still very Georgiana. Very true to her. I very. love this look so I, much. One of my favorites of the night. I guess my only note would be it didn't have much of a story. There wasn't a lot of surprises throughout. But even that, she she threw the umbrella. A lot umbrella. of them didn't have an. She like, threw the stories. umbrella, though. To, you remember she threw it? Yeah, she did that throw was it. And he was a good catch. It's always exciting when gay people throw things because they're probably not going to throw it or catch it properly. Yeah. So. No, it, it was. I think, I think she was just having fun. <laughs> that, was, that was her performance. <laughs> she was having fun up there. Because listen, the a lot of these girls didn't really have a performance. The only one I could think of that actually had an actual performance was Rudy, but everybody else was kind of just walking their runway this time. Yeah. I think they were more showing their personality on stage, and I think I saw Georgiana on stage being Georgiana. Georgie has this very big kind of hoop skirt silhouette. Do you think underneath that hoop skirt, her knees are bent and crooked like Disney stars? Yes, they're still crooked. Actually, <laughs> they're still I, crooked under there. Right? I think she probably did pay attention. No, I'm joking. You can tell from the way she's standing that she's standing up straight. Good job, Georgiana. Your knees are amazing. Wajardo is next to the stage. I just want to say, we were talking about this. Wajardo didn't get enough respect this season for how good her runways were. I have to agree with you. I feel like over all this season, she is the one that was kind of looked to the side. Even though she served one of the strongest looks, I feel packaged, if you look at it completely, is one of those packages. This look, she looks stunning with the wig the way that it's styled with the makeup yeah the kind of Joan oh, Crawford right yes yeah, very yeah. strong outfit for me yeah it's just classic it's chic and there is a little bit of a story the boys 
bring out these diamonds for her, mm. but she doesn't want the diamonds. She wants the boys. And I think we can all relate to that, except for you. I think you would... I would rather have the you, diamonds. You would have the diamonds, yes. yeah. I, I'll take the boys. Soro Nasty is next to the stage, mm. and Chica de Moda, uh, I think she is actually serving fashion this She's week. She's serving fashion. She's <laughs> serving, like, the fashion moves of, like, posing, like, yeah. in a fashion way, where it's... Do you think it's, like, that Carrie funny. Bradshaw? I find that funny, but... I feel like this is Carrie Bradshaw on the runway, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And she looks stunning. I, I didn't like the wig, like the oh. edges of the wig. Oh, the, the kind of Danny DeVito meme yes, wig. Yes, that was a Danny DeVito <laughs> wig right there. I, I, I kind of like it. I think it works with the look. She's the Danny DeVito of drag. It's avant-garde, so it's like you can have kind of a silly wig. I like it. I like she it. She looked cute. I love. I mean, the the dress was exquisite. And I think because the dress is so like amorphous, it's nice that yes. it's nice that the wig is so like angular. I like it overall, but I feel like there's a lot happening. But because it's red, it all kind of blends in together, so it works. Yeah, but that's kind of the fun part of it, right? Because as it's moving, it's creating different shapes, different yes. silhouettes. Yeah. Uh, no. Definitely. Looks great in motion. Next to the stage, we have Velveteen, and she's just wearing a very very cute pink bunny outfit i love these ears they're huge they look well made they've got nice little details on them and we've just got layers and layers of tulle going all the way down i thought this was like good to fine you know i thought this was a perfectly acceptable final runway for velve not everyone (laughs) agreed i guess i i i like this i don't really understand (laughs) i mean i feel like by seeing the original and seeing this, I don't really see a lot of difference, except that it's just a longer dress. So I don't really get the redemption of it. I think if it was stoned, like, mm. if there was more to it, it looks very flat to me. Like, I love the shape and the silhouette, don't get me wrong, I do love that, but I feel like there's something missing for me. But I feel like she looks stunning, though. Like, she looks beautiful, so... Her face is great. I mean, the styling's good. I, I, I like this. I'm sorry. I like it. Yeah. I won't apologize. No one's asking you to apologize. I won't. I'm saying I like it too. It's not like I'm saying I hate it. Are you going to apologize for it? No, I'm not. Okay, good. Neither of us are apologizing. We're on the record. Why would no I apologize apologies. for it? Because we both like it. Well, I don't like it that way. You're not going to take apologize. a stance. I don't yeah, like you're it. not going to go Yeah, on like it. I'm okay. not taking a stance on liking it. I don't know. I either like it. Like it's, it doesn't matter. I think it does matter. I think that's <laughs> why we do this show. <laughs> Rudy Reyes is next to the stage. And this was a very, very strong performance for Rudy. I sort of didn't get where it was initially because, like, it's a reference to her season three finale, right? Mm -hmm. But why is, like, is the idea, like, that people have graffitied over her clam as it's been left behind? Like, I didn't quite get that. See, that's a good point. I also didn't get that part either. But we realize that she's the pearl. She is the pearl. She starts out in this kind of, like, um, 90s hip-hop graffiti look. It's, like, white, and it's got this nice hood on it, so we can do a reveal to this big, pretty ice skater hair. I I think I like the initial look more than the pearl look, but I I think the prop was just so cool. It Mm -hmm. made up for it. When it opened up and created a little gold stage for her, I was very impressed. Yeah, I think one of the more simple looks of the night. The one that it reveals to. Yeah, so when it reveals But she to, had a reveal. But she had a reveal. And I like the first look. It's not like the first look should the first be look was, Yeah, yeah, you're right. I feel like it's one of the weak ones for me of the night. But a very strong look in my book. <laughs> Dr. Seuss. I like when she lays down in the clam and then the clam eats her. Listen, she's a great performer. No doubt about that. That wig, though, I don't know. Like, I don't think it goes with the bodysuit. I'll agree with that. Do you think it would have been funny if when the clam ate her, um, blood came out and then it opened up and it was just like a skeleton in there? I think that would have... Sure, darling. That would have... No, she would have gotten the gold star for sure. That would that would be telling a story. No, because she's a pearl. She lives inside of it. I guess. All right. My idea doesn't work. It would have been interesting if she would have come out like dirt. Oh, and then gone in there and had a, a reveal. It gets processed. Yes. Okay. That would have been interesting. <laughs> yeah. I don't think any drag queen wants to walk on stage as dirt. <laughs> she would do it. Rudy would do it. She would find a way to make it chic. Speaking of chic, Madison Basre is next to the stage and she just looks stunning, doesn't she? Simple yet very, very powerful. 
I think of the looks that didn't really have a reveal or a prop or a Veneno use. This was probably the strongest one. Yes. It was just beautiful. And it was... And she looked gorgeous. The makeup was amazing. The wig was amazing. She looks perfect. Incredible. Yeah. She's a perfect, pretty lady. I love this. Yes. And a season full of wings. I think these are some of the most inventive wings we've seen all season. So this is a nice like end point to our wing storyline. <laughs> wing... Well, we haven't seen the finale. Oh, there's going to be so, so many, many wings. wings. <laughs> there's going to be so many wings. Everyone's going to be drinking Red Bull and they will be having wings. <laughs> do you know the commercial? Well, they <gasps> actually banned that. You can't do that no more. What? The oh, Google does not give you wings anymore. Oh, in the commercial, they can't tell you that it gives you superpowers yes. to drink a can full of chemicals. You had your first Red Bull the other day and you almost died. I almost died. Yeah. Yeah, and I was jittery. You were like, I don't want alcohol. I'm going to have something good for me. I'm going to get two Red Bulls. <laughs> Sirena is next to the stage. And I actually really like this. Um, I'm not really a Disney girl. Look, you dragged me to see the new Little Mermaid. I thought it was just fine. I know. I'm I'm also not, but I'm also not a Disney person. But you love the Little Mermaid. I mean, I think everyone like the likes movie. Yeah. Yes, not the most recent one, but the original one. Yes. Well, you wanted to see it opening weekend, and I didn't want to go, and it became a little bit of an argument, and we did go. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, I hated this. Not my. <laughs> you don't not like my, this. I, I don't like Disney things on the runway. That's true. I mean, I'm right there with you, but I do think as far as having a reveal with a recognizable storyline that fits with your brand, she's La Serenita. I mean, it, it works. She's La Serenita, and then she's Ursula. I mean, it tracks. I, I, I didn't mind it. Even when the little eel fell off, I thought she was smart to kind of just like... Grab it and then start She didn't let it. it. Yeah. And yes. She I made think, it part of the, I yeah. think she's very smart in terms of perform as a performer. I think as a look wise i don't know i didn't realize she was cosplayer or something like that that was her drag thing. this did give I me guess, cosplay i will say because she's more of a impersonator yeah than a cosplayer so i don't know i'm a little bit confused don't have me speaking of cosplay i do think it was a little rude of them to put that disney cosplay right before this disney cosplay because it does yes, pale two in comparison disney cosplays. <laughs> so you're right these are two disney cosplays they're both owned by disney um seafair has decided to do a uh, recreation well kind of a gender swap of namor from black panther 2 and i just think this look is stunning um it's obviously hearkening to some mesoamerican references so it's nice that she was able to find some authenticity in that and bring it to a next level really cool this creates a weird dynamic for me because i was just saying i don't like disney things but then i see this runway and i'm like fuck she looks amazing there's ways to elevate it right so there are ways to elevate it i feel like for me it took a little longer to see the disney aspect of it you, you know, didn't believe that it was from black I know, panther I you didn't thought i was wrong <laughs> i thought you were wrong and you were because right. i was like she has wings on her feet it's black panther <laughs> i know i apologize to the public for not knowing black panther too I think she's just done another another level. There's so many details. There's so I... many details of this outfit, and it's so well executed. The runway was clean, and there were no errors. I think she's one of the better performers, like Tresesenta. So those are all of our looks. Uh, I think really impressive across the board. Very impressive. All of them were very, very good. And I thought it was going to be one of those episodes based on the critiques, you know, kind of on the finale or the semifinals of a drag competition. It's like, okay, you made it to the end. We're just going to give you compliments. We're yes. going to say how great you are. I thought that that was going to be the entire <laughs> co like commentary. And then what happened, Sergio? <laughs> then what happened? And then we get to Velotine. <laughs> what did Lola the Gorgeous fourth girl have to say? in the lineup. And then... <laughs> She goes hard. She goes hard. She and, goes hard. You know, we've just heard this really heartbreaking story in the workroom. And I, I, this was the one time all season where I was like, Lola, please, just not, no, 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 no. It's too mean. <laughs> it was too mean for me. <laughs> I have to kind of agree. Oh my God. <laughs> because it was a, no, and, and it's more for like, their runway was very fast. Her runway, she just went out, jumped, hopped, and then literally dipped. Yeah, like it was so quick compared as opposed to everybody else that they took their time to walk the runway. Yeah, I feel like we even talked about it during the episode. Yeah, it was noticeably it was shorter than the rest of so them. So that is my only comment, not necessarily about the dress because she looks stunning and I love the proportions of it. So I don't necessarily agree with her commentary, but I know that she was one of the weaker ones for me. Yeah, of course, but it's like. 
to me, it's like, if you're going to say something mean about Velve, can you at least say something shitty about, like, someone else in the lineup? Just so she's not the only one up there she on the, the final one. episode who's getting, like, mean critiques. That that was the hard thing for me. Say something mean about Madison. Call her dumb and ugly. Do it. It'll make Velve feel better. It'll make me <laughs> feel better. <laughs> Madison can take it. She knows it's not true. Everyone should be able to take it. <laughs> Well, the girls have not been able to take it this season. That has been uh, the other theme yeah. of the season, along with wings. Um, we get our gold star assigned to the One winning look. <laughs> the winning look of the week, yes. It's Seafair. Seafair, the winner of the entire franchise. And she's back in. She was out, <laughs> but now she's back in. What is this? Well, she was meant to lip sync again tonight, but because she got a That's gold true. star, she doesn't have to lip sync, so she gets to sign. Yes, and this was kind of the beginning of, like, here's a bunch of rules. Yes. Um, of course, before we get into the lip sync assignment and the purgatorio voting, we have our Casi Lamas, and it goes to Rudy Reyes. Rudy Reyes. I was Were excited. you shocked? No, I wasn't. Okay. I thought she had the best performance on the runway. Yes. And I think, yes, you and I both kind of had issues with the final look and the hair. Like, maybe there were some styling issues there. But she had a performance. She had the performance. She had a performance. Yes. And she had um, a big prop. And you know what? If you ship something like that from your house, I'm, I just think you're cool. Mm-hmm. How'd you make that? What's it made out of? <laughs> How did you make a big clam? If you had to make a big clam right now, based off stuff you get at the hardware store, what are you, you going to buy? Some wire mm. and some fabric. Smart. It, it's a little complicated, but we are told that the person who gets the most votes will lip sync. And then Seifer can lip sync or can assign someone else to lip sync in her place. But this is the first time that they say that with the winner. They didn't tell that to Soro Nasty last episode. They, they, didn't, they weren't like... You can lip sync or choose somebody else. They're like, no, you must choose somebody else. And I know, but I think it's different. With Seafair, they're like, oh, you no, get no, no, to no. lip sync. I think it's different and I actually like it because the winner of this lip sync so gets another gold star. Another role that we don't know. No, but I like it. I like it for this. <laughs> for okay. this, I think it's cool. But you're right. It makes sense because of the gold star. Yeah. I agree. Because if she was like maybe in a position where she didn't already have so many points, mm-hmm. maybe she'd be like, okay, it's worth it for me to risk getting two black stars because I'm already not going to make it to the finale. I need that one last gold star. Yes. I so, see. It didn't end up being useful for Seifer because yes. she was in the lead already. But... It did give her the opportunity to assign someone else. She's like, oh, I could do Soro Nasty. Get a little revenge. Scares Soro Nasty a little bit. But she's like, no, I'm just kidding. I'm going to do Rudy. And this seemed like an anti-click move, right? Well, this is a great move because... Break it down. Listen to me. These are these are my conspiracy theories. Yes. First conspiracy theory. Sirena... Is a front runner. You want Sirena out. Yes. The way you need. Oh, the... and she is voted. Yes. Yes. Everyone because votes for her. She to, has to so many sing. gold stars. So you're like, I need to pick somebody that's strong. Who do you pick that is could beat her? Rudy Reyes is the only one that could beat her in my mind. And the way that I think Seifer was thinking of like, who is the one that can beat Sirena so that she doesn't? Because if she gets two stars, she wouldn't have. If she would have gotten two stars, two black stars. Only Madison, Georgiana, and Seifer would have been in the top three. I think you're right. I think that checks out. Like that would have, th- those would have been the finalists. And I think that's what that's what Seifer was thinking. And then the other theory is Seifer wanted to see everybody lip sync because through the entire season, we never saw Sirena or Rudy Reyes lip sync. Oh. So I think that's another option that she was like, I'm going to choose. Oh. Rudy. She didn't want there to be like a Chad Michael situation where Chad was like, I never lip sync. Yes. You know? Yes. So because she... then no one can say like, hey, Seifer, you lip sync. Because everybody else has lip sync already. Okay. This okay. one, except for Rudy Reyes. Two good theories. And the third theory is that sh- she knew that Sirena and Rudy were part of the biggest alliance in, yes. the, in the show. So she's like, I'm going to put pair them against each other because now they both have to struggle because one of them will win and the other one will get two black stars. So it's like, I think that there was like many different theories on why she chose Rudy Reyes. And I think that was the perfect move. I think it was very smart. And it's like, God damn it, Seifer, is there anything you can't do? You're good at strategy as well? She's really good at strategy. Can't you be stupid at something? (laughs) (laughs) Can't you be stupid and bad at anything? Anyway, we go into this lip sync between Sirena and Rudy Reyes, and it's to the Talia version of A Quien Le Importa, 
a song I know and love because you played it for me on some road trips. I was excited to see this lip sync. What did you think of the lip sync after it started? I think this season we've been judging lip syncs differently because it's not about who can dance the most. It's more about who can become the song Mm. and the meaning of the song a little more. So I do have to kind of agree that Sirena was the winner for me. I agree. And also, I don't know... Is it me or did Rui Reyes not know all of the words to the song? I just rewatched it and I think you're on to something. Perhaps there was also times when Sirena's lips were not matching up with the lyrics, but they showed Rudy missing the lyrics a couple times. Yes. So I think it would have been the nerves because mm. had Rudy, I think, and also maybe Rudy knew that if she won, she was not going to go to the finale either way. So uh, it was better for her to lose so that Sirena could still go to the finale because they were, you know, they're out Oh, they were in an alliance. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, so I don't know if maybe Rudy Reyes bet herself. <gasps> you think she threw it so that the two black stars didn't end up on one of her alliance members? Yes. Interesting. She was really heartbroken at the end of this. She was so heartbroken. She was crying, um, and Sirena was trying to help her up. And Letal was kind of sending, like, Words of encouragement, like, hey, get up, girl, let's do it. And Lola was not having it. Not having it. No, she got up out of her seat. She was like, get up already. Um, What do you think? I mean... (laughs) Should people be allowed to have mental health breakdowns? (laughs) Listen, it's a hard topic because this is a competition show. It's very stressful environment, of course. But you also have to be professional in a, sure. in a way. So it's also hard because it's like when somebody breaks down, you do have to help them. But at the same time, production has to continue. So it's like, how do you handle that situation? That's kind of tough for me to understand. And I, I don't know if she was doing the right thing or not, but she did it. So I don't know. I don't know if it's good or bad. Well, I mean, she's crying on the runway. That's good TV. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> don't have to be. I know, but it's like we've seen so many girls break down and cry like this season. <laughs> but if she was crying for like 45 minutes and Lola was like, get Maybe up. For... I want to go to lunch. <laughs> yes. Maybe she was there for a long time. I mean, it's also like she was realizing that she had lost. I know in that moment on stage, which no one else had to go through that. And it's on like stage. a million. She's like, she just realized she let a million pesos go. Ugh. Too bad. We now have to decide who is third place. And with 12 points, we have a tie. It's Georgiana (gasps) and Madison. (gasps) Our girls. Literally the ones we were rooting for. This is true. Well, actually, my two girls, Soto and (laughs) Rudy, did not make it to the end. Oh, wait. My girls made it. Your girls Ah, made it. Yeah. Madison (laughs) and Georgiana. (gasps) My girls are the ones who were having to lip sync for a tie to tie to break a tie this is another song that i love Toros me miran by gloria trevi what did you think of this lip sync so how about stronger or weaker than the one before it uh definitely stronger for me i agree i, I thought, think, this was I thought really that this fun. was a much better lip sync i also thought that they were both giving it their all and i yeah. think i think it was pretty much tied i was leaning more georgiana mm-hmm. at first i was more marisan and then later in the episode, I was more Georgiana. So I was more, I was too, I was, I was rooting for both of them, honestly. Yeah. Except, again, based on what the judges are looking for, I knew Madison had the lead on this song. Yeah, because she had some reveals. They were well-timed. Yes. She was embodying the energy. I thought it was good. And I think maybe just like Madison's natural style is a little closer to Gloria Trevi's mm-hmm. than... Uh, Georgiana's is. I mean, Madison is very this, so I think that helped her out. This was very good. I probably good lip sync. Yeah, I would. I would have given it to Madison as well. But surprise. But wait, Rue. There's two lipsticks. There's two lipsticks, but they're good lipsticks. So half of the cast go to the finale. (laughs) Georgiana gets to go as well. So yes, four out of our eight um, solo last mass competitors. I mean, it's literally Drag Race All Star Seven. That's true. Yeah. Um, do you think that the bottom four will do some sort of silly lip sync for uh, They probably Sector? will. They I... probably will next episode. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. That'd be fun. Because there, there's like the episode before the finale, oh. so they might do it there. So wait, if they do that, then we have to do a recap. If they do that, we'll do a recap. If not, we But if it's just recap. the reunion where they're all like sitting in a semicircle and people are just yelling occasionally, I no, I'm good. So I think that will do it for this week's episode of Nick and Sergio's Fun Watch List. Leave some comments. We may or may not do an episode next week. If we get enough comments that might make us do an episode next week, because we'll have enough content if yeah. the reunion's a little We light. could do like a end of the season 
recap of like our favorite moments. Yes, we could do that. Things that we liked, things that we didn't like. Only, how about this? If we get 10 comments, (laughs) because I feel like I can read about five of them if we get 10. Okay. If we get 10 comments, we'll do an episode next week. How about that? How about that? We'll do it. Challenge accepted, audience. We love you so much. Um, We will maybe see you next week, but we will certainly see you for our recap of the Solo Las Mas finale live from the Pepsi Center. We won't be at the Pepsi Center. Not this time. The Microsoft. The Microsoft Pepsi Center. Oh, Pepsi, you're right. (laughs) Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. (laughs) Bye.